Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we begin our day uh, with a word of encouragement uh, from the letters of Samuel Rutherford. And as we begin today, let us do so with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for you are the God who has granted unto us this day. And dear God, we pray in your mercy that you will guide us and direct us in all that we do today. Dear God, may you lift us up in your presence. May you cause us to remember that our hope is in the heavens and not upon this present evil world. And dear God, we pray through the power of your Holy Spirit uh, that you will grant unto us your blessed providence on this Friday. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today our first letter comes to us uh, from the hand of Samuel Rutherford to a fellow minister, uh, a man by the name of Thomas Wiley, uh, who was minister of Borg. Uh, let us go now to what Rutherford is seeking in this letter. Reverend and dear brother, I neither can nor do write to you about this business in respect to my case as much as yours. And you write to me that which I should write to you. If grace pay not our debts and bond surety for us, I see not how I shall make a reckoning for one soul far less for multitudes. Only it is God's will that we put grace to the utmost and engage Christ for his work. If he refuse charges to his own factors, the lost bankruptcy will redound to him. But Christ is never a loser of his people, nor can his glory suffer. But I must entreat you for the help of your prayers, as you will do for me anything out of heaven. I am now called for to go to England. The government of the Lord's house in England and Ireland is to be handled. My heart beareth me witness, and the Lord, who is greater, knoweth my faith, was never prouder than to be a common, rough country barrowman in Anworth, and that I could not look at the honor of being a mason to lay the foundation for many generations, and to build the waste places of Zion in another kingdom or to have a hand or finger in that carved work in the cedar and almond trees in that new temple. I desire but to lend a, a, a help and a cry. Grace, grace upon the building. I hope you will help my weakness in this and seek help to me from others as, as if I had named them and intercede for the favor of my father's seas, winds, and tides and for the victory of strong and prevailing truth. Grace be with you, yours in Christ, Samuel Rutherford from St. Andrews, 20th of October, 1643. Now the particular event uh, that Samuel Rutherford is asking prayer for is that he has been called as a commissioner uh, from the Scottish church to the assembly that was uh, then getting ready to meet at Westminster in London. Now, as Presbyterians, we have the Westminster Confession of Faith and the Catechisms. And these, uh, this Confession and Catechisms were written at the Westminster Assembly. And so when Rutherford talks about uh, building uh, this uh, foundation that will be for many generations, he's talking about uh, that very confession that we hold so dear. And so it's worth remembering the humility of God's servant as he went to do this work and how thankful we should be uh, for godly men who are willing uh, to serve Christ's church. The second letter today is to a young man in his congregation in Anworth, uh, where he was pastor. And he's writing to him about the struggles uh, that are natural to young men. It's some, somewhat comforting to know. Uh, that young men in 1643 struggled with the same sins uh, that men in 2020 uh, struggled with. Let's hear what Rutherford has to say to this young man. Worthy sir, I am heartily glad that you have any mind of me or my ministry while I was with you, and I wish I could see the fruit of it. I trust that you strive for the power of godliness that has been so preached in the land. For salvation cometh not to every man's door, and the way to heaven is a straighter and narrower path than any man thinks. 
and you are now in the most glassy part of your life, when it is easy to follow, and when the lusts of youth are rank and strong. And happy are you that you can pass through these dangers with a good conscience. So my real advice is that you acquaint yourself with prayer and with searching the scriptures of God, that he may show you that good way that bringeth rest to the soul. The ordinary faith and the country godliness will not save you. There must be more for a man than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees if he is to enter the kingdom of God. And I shall desire that you will take to heart the worth and price of an immortal soul and the necessity of dying to self and living to Christ and being fearful about the judgment that is to come at death, that you may be saved. As for my ministry among you again, I can easier desire it than see to it. The Lord of the harvest take care for you, and send you a pastor according to God's heart, and that's rare as ever. And this is why we need reformation. Remember my heart's love and respect to your mother and sister. Grace be with you your sometime pastor, and still friend in God. From St. Andrews, Samuel Rutherford. You know, it's fascinating, again, to hear in this letter the way in which this uh, pastor uh, was writing to this young man and warning him of many of the same things that pastors today uh, warn uh, young people about. You know, one of the things I want to highlight is this concern that he not have his faith and trust in what... Uh, Rutherford calls here a country godliness. Now, you know uh, people like this. You know they they claim the name of Christ with their mouth, and they live a good life. Right? They don't steal. They don't murder. You know they are uh, nice to their uh, spouse. They love their children, uh, but they know nothing of Christ. Right? This is a country godliness. Right? And, you know, those of us who are born and raised in the country and those of us who lived in the country our whole lives you know, know this uh, kind of gentleness uh, that is a mark of country folk. Uh, and Rutherford is warning this young man that that does not save you. you know, being a good person in the wor- eyes of the world is not uh, redemption. The reality is that, uh, especially as a young man, he will fight against the temptations of the flesh. And if he relies on this country godliness, then he will be lost. What he needs, according to Rutherford and according to the Holy Scriptures, is to do two things. He needs to be much in prayer and much in the Scriptures. Because prayer will show him his need to rely on God. And the Scriptures will show him his need for Christ as he discovers his sin and is reminded how beautiful is uh, the feet of our Redeemer. And so as you go about your day today, as we've read these two letters, let's remember again the power of prayer. Uh, This man, Samuel Rutherford, who we still know of 400 years after the fact, was kept by the prayers of his fellow uh, friends and saints. He understood that he was unable to do these things on his own and only accomplish them by God's grace. And for young people, young men especially, never forget that your faith is held by Christ, not by who your parents are, not by where you go to church, not by how good of a person you are. Uh, For there are many good people in the world's eyes who are in hell right now. What you need is the forgiveness of sins found alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to rest and trust in him alone for all things. May you each be blessed today. And may God's grace be with you through all things. Take care.